years. I like to extend the warmest and affection to you all, wherever you stand in time. May the light of the eternal spirit bless and keep you all to guide you on the path of your unfoldment to the endless sunshine that awaits you. May we stand one day in the golden shores of eternity and embrace one another as equal spirits. As we stand and look upon your earth and see how at this sacred time of year of the gathering of the festivities there is still divide and conflict within your world. Our dream for you as the new year bells toll is for peace and love to come to humanity and to come to all of you and may you stand on the land of peace no more war or suffering that has been brought about by man's inhumanity to man may we give wisdom to those who claim to speak upon you to speak for you to stand for you as you represent the countries that you are residents of. May we also ask for peace and wisdom come to those who are misjudged, who may not see the world in which you see. May believe that the greatest lie that has ever been written or spoken is death. Death is not a lie. It can be the painful truth that frees you from the husk of your earthly life. Each of you who are listening to these words have come to the realization as someone who you love has gone from this world and now stands in eternity. In your world, people leave you. In our world, people join you. Join you to stand three from the hands of time. Three from war, pain and suffering. You are not divided by language or color or sexuality. You are all equal in the light of the spirit. It is only when you walk with this earth below your feet and the warmth of the sun that shines upon you, you start to find individuality, but also you may find ways to divide you from the circle of light that was given to you at the moment of your birth. So as we look upon the festivities, you call this time Christmas. We used to call this time of celebration, but now as I stand from the shores of eternity, we call this time the festival of light. This is when the world is brightest because the spirit of Christmas is to love one another to bring those who have been divided or have migrated to other countries together for one day to sit around a table to enjoy the feast that God, however you understand God to be, has given your family and your kin. I ask you now, as we approach this time, as you have done so with great love and encouragement to consider those who are less fortunate than oneself 
at this time of year. As you may rest your head upon a pillow, they may rest their head underneath the stars and to fill every drop of rain, to be forgotten by your world, hidden as others will pass. Spare a kind thought to those who are learning to stand again. If it is your will, allow us to come with you to give healing to those who are in need, comfort to those who have lost their way. And I ask you now, as we approach the end of this year, what will you do differently when the new year bells toll? And you say once more, I have survived another year. The year that you have lived has been written and the ink is dry. You have within your hands a new opportunity to write another chapter of your existence. What will you do differently? What knowledge will you gain? by sitting quietly and allowing the God source of your soul to allow itself to move to the very surface of your being and allow the spirit to move you, to animate you, so that this year that approaches will be a time of change for all humanity no matter if it is human or animal. Allow the light to shine for all, to realize you are equal, equal, cut from the same gossamer by the hand of God. Some may see this as a time of reflection as you are woven in the tapestry of life. The word God may not sit comfortable with everyone, but if I said God is love, may love sit well with all, as each of you are experiencing love through your life. There are times where you may feel that you are abandoned or alone. You are never alone. Even though we move too fast for your eyes to see, we speak too softly for your earthly ears to hear. But if one could move their perception, maybe then you glimpse eternity. You may not be able to hold our hands at this moment, but doesn't stop us sitting next to you, embracing you, bringing happiness to the soul that resides within you. I ask you now, as I stare upon this dusty mirror, as I come to the end of my benediction and my speech to you all, I say to you, You'll never drink the ocean dry. But as each of you that come, and you may be just a spark of light, that you come together now, has made a collective consciousness that has brought much light to your world. It is only when we blow out the candle we can truly find the light of the sun to blow away distractions and therefore you face love and face the truth that man can never die. Your bodies may be borrowed from time, borrowed from the earth, but the soul belongs to eternity and the memory will come with you when you close your eyes and embrace death as an old friend. We drink the cup that death has poured himself 
and we will celebrate the life and who you are. And as you have left footprints in the sands of time, we will walk shoulder to shoulder into the great light, the great light of God. But as I speak of God once more, God is not a bearded gentleman that sits upon a throne in judgment. God is light. Light brings all life to this world. As spiritualism comes to save you from the insanity of false idols, who was brave enough to stand and ignite the flame of curiosity. To start the spark that has turned now into a blazing inferno that has touched the four corners of your world. But as the fire burns like everything in life, what has a beginning must serve its purpose. I pray that spiritualism and who you are, striving to seek out the truth, stretching for the shores of our world, allowing those gifted individuals to become our voice, a voice that we have lost, and slowly we are finding in your world once more. If you are to stand to represent us, stand in your truth and allow our thoughts to move through your consciousness. If you are to sit in the manner like the one we love, may we dust your consciousness and allow us to speak with you to those who wish to listen to words. But if I say to you, that any thought that insults your intelligence may it be burnt away from your consciousness. May I say to all of you, if any of my words command you, or say you must, I can never tell you what you should or should not do. I can only advise you I could never rob you of the journey that leads back into eternity. I can advise you as I say, but it is up to you if you wish to embrace these words or allow them to collect dust within your consciousness. I understand the purpose of this gathering. And I say to all of you, there are no answers. There are only questions that will lead you to a greater question. Another chapter that will be written. Another enigma that must be addressed. But I say this to you, as I hand now proceedings into the care and keeping of your world, I thank for allowing me to share these thoughts with you. Now, I must confess to you all that there is no difference between you and I. The only difference is that I have walked this earth, commanded by time, but now my life is a distant memory and I am free of time. Even as I address you now, I did not open the statement and say good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. I said where you stand in time. But if I was to say to all of you, what is your time? You will all be different from one another. So time is a faith, it lies to you. And mankind can't even get time right itself. 
not saying once you die you know the answers. I say once you have given yourself to death, your view upon subjects free of human emotion seems to become greater and your thirst for knowledge becomes an unquenchable thirst no matter what you devour you will constantly ask for more so once again now as i have sufficient hold upon his mind nick my friend i trust that you are well i'm very well thank you eric it's lovely to hear from you it is always pleasing you know to experiment in such a way but once again i say this form of communication perplexes me that i do not see you but i can hear you i can hear and through the sound gives birth to color and therefore i can see you but when we sit in the same resonance i see you but to understand even though we are separate from countries a collective consciousness has brought us together with a purpose that god himself only has the answer of why maybe that if it is within my capability to reach out to god and ask so and if i have the answer may i deliver it to you all nick my friend i have to also say to you i will only stay for a moment why i allow another to also assist in this proceeding okay thank you eric will let you... us proceed in the usual manner okay you're going to start with with questions first of all is that right yes my friend. okay so who has who has the first question that they'd like to ask eric if you can raise your hand oh. and if you don't have um if you don't have a, a camera, uh, that means I can't see you. You, you can type your in the chat room. Um, but please make sure you keep your microphones on mute until I come to you. So wave to me if you have a question that you'd like to ask Eric. I understand that you are got more than one place of focus my friend <laughs> <laughs> i have many places tonight it's a rather large group um so just bear with me Eric. i have to say we outnumber you <laughs> <laughs> that's nice to know that's really nice to know okay so let me just wait to me if you've got a question you'd like to ask eric if not i will continue to proceed with thought okay i can't see anybody with a question Eric, but i do have oh just one second we do have somebody um hey dear i'm going to unmute you okay you can ask eric your question okay i uh, was wondering how you live in the afterlife um how must we imagine that life is there what do you do over there? Do you have a similar life like we here? We, we work, education. Eh? Is the afterlife all love and light? That's what I'm wondering about. Well, my friend, and thank you for your kind inquiry, and thank you for being brave to start our journey. I have to say to you, probably by the end of our journey, we will have many questions. But as you have asked for my view, then allow me to then elaborate. In the life that you live, that when you come to the time of the mortal death, as you close your eyes to this reality, you awaken within our world. The state of familiarity as you first make your transition is very much like how your environment is. Days, if not weeks, before your death, 
You are the same person, but you are free from pain and ailment. The residence that you have within our world is very familiar to you. And if you desire to have a different residence, then so be it. Whatever you think will become the reality. And don't for one moment ever believe that if someone fears the afterlife, then that becomes reality. Anything that is fear is wiped away from your consciousness when you move into the transition stage of death. I myself reside in a residence accustomed to what I was used to with my family that surrounds me. We do not have day or night over here. It is an endless sunshine. If you are to ask me, as I look upon your year, if you are to consider time, what appears to me to be only a moment can be a year to you. And therefore we do not mourn when we come to our side of life of the people we leave behind, the time of separation is only a brief moment to us, but can be eternity for you. If you were always wanting to sing, but were unable to soothe the ears of those who wish to listen, over here you sing so sweetly. If you wish to draw, but were unable to grip a pencil or to have the inspiration to splash color upon the canvas, in our world you can draw, you can paint and express yourself, and every drawing will hang in a marvelous location for others to see the creation that you have. It is a place that allows you to fulfill all your desires. But when you receive this knowledge and you consider what you truly wish in life, you can achieve it in your world. And therefore, when you have your transition, you move into the state of familiarity and your duties begin. I myself, attended a place called the Halls of Learning, which is very much like a library, but not full of books. It was of light. Whatever I desired to learn, I stepped into the light and instantly absorbed it, which made me curious to learn as much as I can to further my own understanding of progression but when one is ready, you seem to shed another layer of your consciousness. And we call this process the second death. And this is where you move from the state of familiarity into the greater world of spirit. You see in the horizon your destination, but it will take a moment for you to accept it. And remember, a moment to us can be many lives in your world. We are not governed by time. But may I say this to you, you have already seen the golden shores of eternity before you were born. Therefore, you know your environment. The only difference is that when you return home, you have lived an earthly life. An identity has taken on by the light. You share your knowledge with others who may not have lived a life like you. So I say this to you. Our world is the reality. 
And your world is the dream. And one day you'll wake. And welcome into the light. And you will be reminded of the place you have been. Where you have gone. And where you have returned. I hope that has covered not only one question, but provoked many more. I thank you for your kind inquiry. Let us move along. Thank you. Okay, wave to me if you have a question you'd like to ask. Chris, we'll come, we'll come to you. There we go. I've. I'm trying to unmute you. Just bear with me a second. You're doing a sterling job, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, it won't let me unmute you, Chris. Can you try unmuting it yourself? Oh, dear. No. Okay, well, perhaps perhaps you can type your question in the chat room and and i will i'll come and i will relay the question to eric for you uh, after the next question if you just click on chat you should be able to type it and i can see that danielle has a question let me let me just find you danielle and we'll come to you there we go let me just unmute you there we go you you can ask eric your question hello eric Hello, my dear. I trust that you are well. I am well. Um, Eric, there are people looking on Facebook right now, listening to your words. And I there don't is some... understand that firm. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's, it's other people who are looking and listening to your words. And there is oh. somebody who asked a question. If it's fine that I ask that question to you. It makes no difference at all. I hope they would like to hear my response. I'm pretty sure they are. Um, Karen Jarvey asked, I seem to have lost my question. I would like to know, please, from Eric of the Spirit Team, why do children under 25 years old leave the Earth plane early? Well, I have to say to you, my friend, that anyone who is spirit that comes to the Earth must also return to our world. It saddens us to see such pain as such joy comes as we weep tears of sadness as you are born to this world, as you weep tears of joy. Knowing that a gift from God has been given to you and tears of sadness come and fall down your cheeks as their life comes to an end and we weep tears of joy to welcome them back into the light. But then we look over our shoulders and see the pain, the pain of those who have migrated from your world. I have to say to you that the physical form is fragile. The physical form is not able to sustain the supreme power of the spirit. And therefore, it can only live in harmony with one another for a short period of time. But I say to you this, to cherish each moment whilst you still live under your sun. The time of separation does occur, maybe through cause and effect. A course of action may affect outcome from someone's stupidity or anger or suffering may cause harm to another and therefore end their light within your world. If I was to say, why does God allow, I say, with the most kindness of thoughts, with the most kindness of words, God doesn't allow, mankind allows. But I say this to you, is it not a beautiful thing to have a gift of life, even though they may not sit physically at the table, but 
when time passes, when it is your turn to transition, my, my, you'll never be separate again. The children that come to our world are cared for. The children that come to our world still attend school. The only difference between a child in your world and the child in ours, when children fall, they simply stand again and they are not hurt. They're not in pain. They do not suffer from disease or ailment. But in your world, the body is fragile. They continue their learning. They continue to support your world. They stand with you and hold your hands as you rest and cuddle you at night. It is sad, you know, if we are able to continue physical phenomena in your world to bring it back into the light for you to see your children. And you'll never feel the pinch that death has caused himself. So I say this to you. It can't be through cause and effect. It can't be through element or situation or environment. But may we thank for a brief moment that you were able to know them. But remember, they will always walk with you. And when it is your time, I say this with firm confidence, they will be at the front of the queue to welcome you into eternity. I thank you for allowing me to hear a question that wasn't your own. And I thank you for showing the gift of kindness. Let us move along. Thank you, Eric. Um, there's a question that, that's been sent to, to me by Bob. Uh, he says, in the past, uh, and he says Daniel has stated this, but I know that both of you have spoken about this in the past. Uh, people, barbaric, sorry, cruel and barbaric people such as Adolf Hitler, when yeah. they die, they don't enter uh, the spirit world as most people do. Rather, they're instantly absorbed into the light and cease yeah. to exist. Are you able to expand on that a little further? Of course I can, my friend as it is been asked and we have answered on many occasions. Whatever we do in life is not a stroke of a master's brush of the portrait of who you are. If you have, sir, kindness and goodness, then the palette is rich with color. If you have caused an unjust and suffering, then the palette is full of darkness. When one comes to the end of their transition here, and indeed moves into the state of familiarity, great healing is given to the mind, and therefore it is wiped away of the situation of the life they have lived. When they have reached an an understanding, if I can call it that. They will be taken to the halls of learning where they will gaze upon the portrait and then themselves will judge how their life has been. And they can be the harshest judge of them all. When we talk about individuals that have caused mass harm within your world, it serves no purpose for them to dwell within the state of familiarity. They instantly absorbed into the light. You may say that even though they have done cruel things, they are rewarded by not going through the layers of consciousness within our realm. But look at what they have missed out on. Look at what they have been robbed of. 
the experience to find spirituality. They do not exist anymore. They are not an individual drop of rain. They are now exalted into a greater light. Those who have been affected by the individual that has cast the first stone, you may seek answers whilst you still live. But indeed, that when you take a mortal death, as you move into the greater world of spirit, that thought is moved away from you. You're only reminded of things when you come back to speak to this world. That is why that certain individuals always start to say, I have a gentleman here who has cancer. And we are reminded of that. Did we have that? So we are only reminded of death when we come close to you to speak with you. But it is only a brief moment. But these individuals serve no purpose in our realm. Now I say this to you. I don't want you for one moment to then polish your thoughts to think now that I have done such injust, I will be exhorbed, you will not. But as you sit here now, contemplating these words, you have started to enrich the colors on the master's palette, ready to bring another stroke of your portrait. I always amuse myself when I consider these thoughts. When someone makes a portrait of yourself, you only see the error and weakness. But others who know you say, that is a beautiful portrait. Oh, look how wonderful you look. Does it not show you then the harshest judge is yourself? But there are certain individuals that have caused mass exodus and therefore on a very rare occasion they're exhorbed into the light. You can hunt for eternity, you will never find this one. Have I expanded enough for you? Or have I repeated my steps once more? No, that was wonderful. Thank you, Eric. Bob's smiling and uh, putting his thumb up, so I guess he's very happy with that response. Thank Isn't you. Isn't it interesting how people can commune when they lose their voice? <laughs> I can speak on this, you know, that I myself, when death came to me, I lost my voice within your world, only in certain occasions that I was able to find my voice. But for then others to say, it must be my imagination. I am not an imagination. I am not a spectre or a phantom. I am someone, I am spirit. And therefore my life is real. Let us move along. Thank you, Eric. Okay, who has the next question for Eric? Just wave to me, please. Um, okay, we've got two people raising their hands. Um, okay, let's go to George. Uh, just bear with me, George. I'm just trying to find you. Okay, George, I've unmuted. This is the longest time I've been silent, you know. <laughs> Hello. Hello, my friend. I trust that you are well. Yes, I am. Thank you very much. Um, my question is, do you believe that physical mediumship is coming back into our world? And what advice would you have for it? I say this to you. When one uses the word believe, it gives room for doubt. 
I say this with great confidence and say I know it is starting to return, but it is in its infant stages once more learning to stand. We ask each of you who desire to commune in such a manner to allow, dare I say, time to be your friend. To sit to create the environment that allows us to move through the fog of your mind, the fog of wants and desires, to perform acts to win your confidence, for you to then realize that we are indeed interested in you. I say this to you, as your modern world continues to evolve, we must evolve with it. And therefore, we must look at different ways of communion. Even though that every form of communication is a facet of a diamond, and if you remove one facet of the diamond, the diamond will never be whole. It will never sparkle or be. So I say this to you, if you wish us to perform like monkeys, then please do not knock upon our door. If you wish for us to move into the ocean of your love and prove without doubt of life beyond life, then so be it. I am concerned how many people approach the subject. Do you know what people ask us often? Is there anyone there? Surely after all these years, you would find something else to welcome us with. If you are sitting, you know we are there. What has moved you to sit to surrender yourself that evening, to be of service. Service to humanity as we serve God. And together as two streams become the river, allow us to move you through the power. But it seems to me that your world is so keen for verification of our reality trying to capture our thoughts with technology, which can be a terrible distraction. We ask you, if you are to create the sanctuary for us to stand together, remove the very thing that imprisons us. I myself do not understand the modern world, but I have learned through the short time that the young man has surrendered his mind to persevere through it, to accommodate, because I wish to serve humanity. But I say this to you, circles of light are being formed, but they are kept secret for now, until it is time. We do not want unnecessary attention put on fragile minds as they are learning to unfold their gifts like the petals of the most perfect flower that awakens to the light and the warmth of the sun, ready to release its fragrance upon humanity. Don't be in a rush to have eternity. And if you do not achieve it in your world, then you will achieve it within ours. We need seances to continue in our reality, to attain higher knowledge, to then cascade it into your world. I hope that has satisfied, and I thank you for your kind inquiry. Thank you. Thank you, George. Okay, uh, who has the next question uh, for Eric? Uh, just, just wave, wave at me, Carla. Let's come to you. Okay, Carla. Hello, Eric, and thank you for speaking with us all today. That is very kind of you, my dear, and I trust that you are well. 
I am. Thank you. I would like to ask you about reincarnation as okay. well as uh, do we actually have a soul contract? Do we agree on our life paths, even though we have free will once we're born here onto earth? Well, I say this to you with greater fondness for your inquiry. If it is a contract, what happens if you break the contract? What happens if you do not fulfill the agreement? If I was to say to you, sign this and you will suffer terribly. You will not know what it is to love. You will not know what it is to walk. Will you freely sign it? I say this to you. This word that you have said so contract is merely a word. You have great potential, but the destination is the same to the golden shores of eternity. You were given a gift of life, and therefore you take each death. But of course, there is influence from our world, but is also the soul within you grow to have attention. It starts to awaken and slowly starts to overshadow doubt. Your brain is there to disarm you. Your brain is there to tell you you cannot do it because the brain's function is to keep you alive and therefore it has created a soul contract to say, well, if you fall and break yourself, it was meant to be, to control you. Now, once again, the subject of reincarnation has met me, and I will stand and face it and say that reincarnation exists, but not in the manner that many of you believe. Reincarnation, like karma, like soul contract, like God, evil, the devil, and so on and so forth are words for you to conform, to conform to be obedient child, or indeed to conform to try and be the best that you can be, because if you do not, you will be punished. I myself have never been privileged enough to meet anyone that has come back to the earth in the manner that many believe. We come back to your world to support you. Can I tell you a little story? which I took great enjoyment when the young man became too big, too big for his own ego. Many years ago, this young one decided to sit and through a moment had an experience, an experience where he saw himself as a different person experienced himself standing in a different time, stuffing his clothes with straw, and then going off to battle. When he tells the story, he says he won many battles. In actuality, he only swung his sword once, missed, and then ended his life, was cut down by another. It was very moving to the young man, and the young man awoke from this state and said, this must be my past life. I understand reincarnation. And when we were able to get a greater hold on his mind, I delivered the killer blow. The young man has a dear friend called La Sipon that walks with him to teach him spirituality. And Lousy decided to reveal his life to the young man. Because they are so in tune, Lousy's life seemed to mirror the feelings of the young one. 
But through me young one's ego, he said, this must be my past life. It was not. It was his guide's life. The one that teaches him spirituality. Now to understand this, you have asked my view. And I say once more, I have not been privileged to meet someone who has been given the opportunity to return to your earth in the manner that has been written by the hand of man. The part of life is progression. If it is to be what is written, if someone murders one, then in the next life, then the balance must come into harmony. What did that person do so wrong then? To be a victim, if you will, of that environment. What will the soul learn from it? When they look over their shoulder and to see their families crumble to the floor and scream, why then? If they are to reincarnate straight away, then why is it that certain individuals as mediums are able then to commune with them? Is it not the purpose of all life for every drop of rain? to return to the ocean. I hope, my dear, I have not offended you or any who hear these words, but I say this to you. Karma, reincarnation, certain words are merely words that have not been understood but have been said, you must follow this to conform. When aren't you, as you have said, free will? And if free will is a rope, may I say this to you, again with great affection. If it is a rope, you have one hand on the rope, and you tug with all your might. And we have many hands on the rope and we stand still as you tug, and with satisfaction you say it was my decision. I thank you for your kind inquiry, my dear. Let us move along. Thank you, Eric. Thank okay. You. Who has the uh, next question for Eric? Just I will answer this question and I will withdraw to allow another who is like Sorry. a disobedient dog at the moment, nipping away, <laughs> saying, is it my turn? <laughs> Thank you, Eric. Let me just find somebody with their hand up. Okay, let me see your hand if you have a question you'd like to ask Eric. Okay, Eric. I don't see any. I don't see any hands, but I do have. I do have a quest. A few questions. Um, I'll ask the next one. Um, Eric, can you please speak of the lower realms, if there are such realms in the spirit world? Yes. Well, to understand that the densest form of vibration is you, your earth. It is the most densest. But of course, you know, if you are to ask me of the spiritual realm, the spiritual realm beyond your earth is indeed the state of familiarity. This could also be used as the terms of the astral, the etheric realm. But it, it all encompasses in one. It is like the links in an ever-growing chain, but each link must be forged and held until it serves its purpose then the link is broken and then the next stage becomes the most densest form so may i say this to you at this moment within the spiritual realm we say it is the etheric 
the astro of the state of familiarity, given many names but the same purpose. Once the earth has served its purpose, and the last one is to leave, then the earth has served and therefore will cease to be, and the state of familiarity will be the first stage of unfoldment of the journey back to eternity. Once again I say to you all, but every individual drop of rain that falls from the mighty sky must find its way back into the ocean, becoming one, one conscious, one supreme thought. I hope, my friend, that has answered inquiry. And I say to all of you, in your understanding, I wish you all well in your journey. May you have the merriment. On Christmas morn, may you also remember those within our world as we assemble around you and continue to celebrate the life we have lived and thank God that you were a part of it. I thank you on behalf of the Austin Wish Circle for allowing me to speak with you in such a way. And I hope for one moment that I have become your friend. I hope that I have not insulted you, but given you the opportunity to see what is around the corner so I will fall silent in this way, and I thank you for your indulgence as I allow another to speak in my stead. Thank you, Eric. I was never going to speak. It was supposed to be my turn, my turn to talk to you. But he wouldn't allow me to speak until we run your reasons. Do it's not think for one moment of how I sound. Cannot answer certain questions. For those who have been in the company of the Austin Wish Circle know that I come to you to help you in your understanding. And of course, if I'm allowed to bring back anyone who loves you, you know, and to do the phenomenon through him when the conditions allow me so. Allow me to share some thoughts with you before I answer certain questions, before time gets too much for me and I have to withdraw and allow him to return to bump his gums. This time of year, our world stands with you, but we will never rest like you rest. There are always people coming to our shores. Death himself will never get tired, as his sole purpose is to give you the moment of relief from the form that you are. I look into your world now and see as the curtain of night is drawn, your world is so dark at this moment, seems to have lost its way. There is great negativity through thought, you know, 
People seem to hurt one another. People seem to be quite strong in thoughts and opinions of one another. But do not think for one moment that even though your world is dark, we're not there. Funny thing is that you have to wait until the light of the sun goes to its place of rest for you to see the stars that have always shined for you. That is like us, you know. When we leave you, it seems that the light has left. But it has always been there as a star that shines for you. Like the stars you can't touch, but our light can touch you. And therefore you are always in our reach, you know. We sometimes walk and stamp and you hear us. Or we walk softly by your side, not wanting to disturb you, you know. Your families and your friends assemble here in this great place of learning, saying that finally their thoughts are being heard once more. We have to work always through the minds of certain ones and we have to see you while you sleep. But you don't remember when you sleep where you come to. And we thank God sometimes you don't. Because if you truly knew, I don't think you would live the next day. I think you would decide to do yourself in and come over to our world. Now because there are certain people who are listening to these words, I want to share a thought when it comes to those who have taken their own life and people say they may be punished, they are not punished. They give them great healing, so it helps them to move from their world to ours. Lots of people when they come to our world always say I didn't realise how much I was loved until I came to the shores. So use this knowledge to know that each day you say to one another how much they truly mean to you. As Mr. Eric has said, sometimes it's hard from our world to try and speak to you. We get told we're a figment of your imagination. We're not your imagination, as he says. We're more alive now than we ever were. We still retain our personalities, of course, as you will. So if you were a shrinking wallflower and you want to again communicate through the people like him, you may need assistance and that's why I'm there for you. I'll speak to anyone, you know, because I love your world and I love humanity and nothing brings me greater joy than to serve you, serve you in the most humble way. I seek nothing in return besides your love. And if I can have your love, I'll be the richest man in eternity, you know. Didn't have much, but I do have much now. So without taking up your precious time, Mr. Nick, let us carry on for a few moments before we all have to fall silent. Okay, thank you, Daniel. It's nice to have you with us. Well, I've always been here, mate. I was standing behind him, awaiting, fiddling my thumbs and all, and he <laughs> in the chair has supposed his mind, and Mr. Eric speaking through him, full of hot air, and we're still standing there saying, well, wait a moment, wait a moment, chance press, just don't come in on, it's my turn, it's my turn. <laughs> Not that I'm griping, like. <laughs> okay, well, just bear with me. I just need to, um, I, I did see somebody with the, with with a hand up and I've lost them now. Um, if you have a question, then please let, let me see your hand. I hope I haven't killed them. No, you haven't. No, I see uh, Brandon has a question for you. Let's go to, let's go to Brandon. Hey, Daniel, nice to meet you. Hope you're doing well. I'm very well, mate. Nice to speak with you. Likewise. I have a question about the power of thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> is it possible for someone on our side to construct an object through thought and for you guys to see it and feel it on your side? Yes, of course, mate. Because 
would your thoughts become our thoughts as well? This is why we know sometimes when bad things are going to happen to your world, because thought precedes action, you know. We hear it and we try and stop it as much as we can. But of course, but we can be powerless, you know, sometimes. We don't have enough strength to, to make it known to your world. So at Christmas time, as you give presents to one another, you can always send a thought of something and it all can come to us. But it may not come in the way you think it. We may want to expand it, you know. Of course, you know, in our world, we don't eat or drink that. But because we come close, we're reminded of certain things. So when him in the chair thinks of whiskey and he sends it to me, I make it a barrel, you know. A barrel turns to an ocean. But it's just because I'm reminded of what things are. A thought is love, you know. Does Can that I ask one more? Yeah, carry on, carry on, Brandon. Yeah, just just one other question. Can you help uh, all of us visualize um, as you were waiting for Eric to uh, speak, like what you were what you were doing, your environment? Were you standing right next to Eric? Well, I, Mr. Eric was standing behind him because he became the principal voice. I was standing behind Mr. Eric with my hands on his shoulder, saying, "Come along, come along." And just moving backwards and forwards. Now, I know that you can't see, but behind him is a bloody great big tree. That's not a tree. I don't know what it is. It doesn't look like a tree. It doesn't smell like a tree. But underneath the tree, there's something there. It's got some giggle juice underneath it. It's called alcohol. And I wanted to see what it was, but it's not the brown stuff, like, not the good stuff. It's that one which is like water. So as I was preparing myself, I was looking at things in your world and looking at things like he was producing within his mind, like he thought of this wonderful thing of having a tree, but what he thinks is not his reality, what I see behind him. But if anyone says it's a nice one, he takes credit for it. If anyone says it's a bad one, he always blames Mr. Darren. So I was just standing behind Mr. Eric, twiddling my thumbs like that, preparing myself by thought, to lower my thoughts into the vibration so that I'm able to then capture his mind and continue to speak without dropping the thoughts and allowing him to return. Okay, thank you, Daniel. You're welcome, mate. Thanks, Daniel. Okay, who has the next question for Daniel? Let me Just let me see your hand. Let me see your hand. There's two sides to every coin, you know. <laughs> Mr. Eric's Ro one side on the other. Rosita's, I think Rosita's waving frantically. Let's just unmute Rosita and she can ask her question. Hello, Ducky. <laughs> Hello, Daniel. Good to hear you again. It's very nice to have your, your company, you know, love. Ah, oh, that's very nice. Thank you. Likewise. Uh, Daniel, someone said to me once that uh, physical mediums uh, cannot have cancer. Can you please uh, uh, give your opinion or uh, reflect on that a little bit? Well, being a physical medium, love, don't make you special, love. It can make you more fragile, you know, because it's a life force which is being used. If you look back in history and you know your history, you'll know that there's been several physical mediums all had cancer, you know. Mr. Leslie Flint, Miss Joan Avison, Minnie Harrison, and the list goes on. <coughs> so being a worker for our world doesn't make you're going to have a longer life, no. Nah. But of course, when something happens to you, when a vibration isn't in harmony with yourself anymore, it can cause disharmony. And therefore, we have to work a little bit harder to continue to work with you. But to understand, love, we would never put you out in the morning like an empty bottle. If you've got something wrong with you, we'll be there to help you. 
as much as we can. So and if someone says their physical mediums don't get cancer, that's a load of old kickers. You can hear you're as vulnerable as everyone else. When your eyes are closed and you're tied to a chair like and we're starting to move things around you, you're more vulnerable then. The power that's being caused to maintain the seance, it can be detrimental to the physical body. So we have to cope the power in ectoplasm to make sure that it doesn't burn. So you're still vulnerable like everyone else, love. You've got to go somehow, you know, love. <laughs> you want to hear it over here sometimes when they're reminded of how they came over. They have competitions. <laughs> they say, oh, well, I had a heart attack. And the other one says, well, I was stabbed. And you can hear them go, ooh. And they seem to have conversations like that. I go in like a wrecking ball and say, look, I slipped over and smacked me head. Didn't know the amount of brains I had until I saw it on the floor. <laughs> so when someone said you didn't have much brains, well, I'll tell you what, it took a little while for that to wash away, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but there's always someone who will have the better of you, love. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Mr. Nick, I think this is the best you're going to get from me. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing fine. Thank you, Rosita. And Mr. <laughs> Eric's back saying it's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we can find you one more question. Okay, who, who, has a, who has a question they'd like to ask Daniel? Let me see your hand. Let me see your hand if you have a question. Uh, Justina, uh, let's come to you. Okay, um, ask, you can ask Daniel your question now, Justina. Can you hear me? She's lost her voice, God love her. Yeah, I've unmuted you. We should be able to hear you. No. Okay, let's just see if we can find something. What you can do, mate, is for her to give you a question and then on another occasion, you know, when he's tied to a chair, like when I'm walking around or doing something, like, you can always ask me and I'll answer it. Okay, we'll do that. If you want to type your question and send it to me to see if we can do it, uh, we can arrange to do it that way. Okay, let me see. Let me see the hand of anybody that's got a question. Okay, Karen's waving. Let's go. Let's go to Karen. Hello, Nick. Hello, uh, Daniel. Hello, Ducky. Now, don't wrap your words in pretty paper, love. So okay. what you want to say, love? But you, you know, I hope all things are good and rosy in your world, love. Thank you. Yeah, I'll unwrap my words because it's Christmas. <laughs> right. I wanted to ask. I think, uh, forgive me if I've got it wrong, but I think it was Leslie Flint, it may have been Leslie, but there was a, um, a medium, famous medium, that actually watched some watched someone go into a lift. He was going to go into a lift. You're wrong, love, straight away. Pardon? I'm thinking of Casey. Yes, sorry, yeah, Casey. And basically the aura went, he didn't go into the lift, and the lift plummeted. My question is, how when does the when does the aura start cook you know sort of leaving the physical body and as regards to visitations in preparation is it weeks is it months or is it days before that spirit you know let the person know that they're ready to go home well i have to say to you you know for me the soul starts to withdraw its power up to two to three weeks before death but also the call comes to our world almost eight months beforehand that we know that the transition time is starting but when we look at it when there's an accident you know where through cause and effect or a disaster the process starts to accelerate you know 
that the power starts to withdraw much more quickly. But of course, if you are to think of this in time, that we are not governed by time, thought is instantaneous. And therefore, they are there ready to welcome you, even though that the soul is starting its transition. Now, of course, when it comes to the moment of death, just before your last breath, your soul power has already started to withdraw. It's already on the shores. But the etheric cord must be severed. And that comes with the last breath. It becomes severed. And once it's severed, then nothing under this sun will ever bring you back, you know. But of course, sometimes the cord is stretched. And like something that's stretched, you come straight back. And that's why people have these out of body thingy in their bobbies, died and come back, you know. But of course, when the soul starts to feel the change that it is coming, either thought has preceded action or at the moment of impact, the moment of impact, the soul has already been taken as the impact has occurred. So therefore, those who are thinking at the moment, did my family member, the one I love, suffer? No, they did not. If it was a quick and sudden moment, it was like closing their eyes and waking them and realizing then that they've come over and they say, I don't know what all the fuss was about, you know. Dying's easy. Dying's easy. This living's difficult. But if you are to talk to me then of a time of how long it was for us to speak back, we can speak back to you almost at the moment of our death. If we are in a coma or have a certain illness, we can speak back straight away, even know that we haven't taken our fully transition then. Those who are suffering with certain illnesses, that may mean that they've lost their thoughts or they may sleep for a long time, that they come to the shores of our world. But of course, when they wake or you see them and say, that's my mother or father sitting there today, then it's more of them back. But of course, when you have someone who has this affliction of an ailment that may be a slow goodbye, it gives you the opportunity to savor each moment, even though it is distressing. For the individual, they're only becoming distressed when they are reminded that they have done something wrong or they're different, or that's not the way of life. It's also distressing for those who are left behind where we have to give great healing to. If I could be bold, and I know it's not your question, love, but I'm going to come in and say it anyway. We don't need rescuing, you know. These people who form circles and say, go into the light. We roar with laughter, we do. But we know the intent behind it. So it's never wasted, you know. But sometimes we rescue you. Mm -hmm. not the other way round. So I say to you that the call comes that preparations must be made for your arrival. That's why certain people who are going to be left behind may have dreams and pathetic dreams or prophecy that they say that they think something is happening. With this one here, he says, at Christmas time, the Christmas before his father came to our world, he was staring at him, you know. He said, I don't know why, but I was staring at my father and I was taking in every moment. Something was making him aware. On the morning of him still standing, this one will say that he was looking at his dad and was taken in each moment and not knowing why. Maybe something then was telling that there was time for transition. 
can you change this process by having this knowledge? Sadly, sometimes you cannot. So I hope I've answered your questions, love, and I answered it in the plainest way I could possibly do it, you know. I hope I haven't chat on anyone's toes, like. You certainly have, Daniel. Thank you. You're welcome. And have a great Thank you, love. You were silenced before you were able to finish. <laughs> but I understand the reasons why, you know, as time slips through our fingers like water. I like to thank you, you know, on behalf of all those who stand with us this night, to stand with us, to show you that it is possible that a group of souls that can come together with a common purpose, a purpose there to serve and to support one another. As some of you may be aware that in seances, that I control the phenomenon, as I said, and I help the children come back at Christmas along with May. That we stand there and bring healing to those children who may not have had a happy Christmas. But the light that is gathered around in the time of celebration of this seance gives healing to the masses. And on a night like this, when it is not a seance, but it's still communion. You have created a light that has come to a healing balm to those in your world. And as we approach the Christmas time, may we approach it with love within our beings. May you love one another. May peace come to one another. And may we understand that if you are loved, you truly cannot die. The greatest words that have ever been written is that you survive the mortal death. This has always been and always known, but certain individuals will say that this is a lie. People say it's wrong to disturb the dead, but the dead started it first by disturbing the living. So with that knowledge, Allow us to knock softly upon your door and I hope you welcome us as we welcome you and we will hold you for eternity. Those who are experiencing Christmas this time, who may have had children come to our world, celebrate their lives, still decorate your trees, still put presents underneath, and think of those who you love and bring us close to you as you open your gifts and your trinkets. And may one day, as we come to visit you, one day you'll visit us and you'll remain and you'll never leave us again. I like to thank you kindly for your generosity, but time is against us. And I must fall silent. I hope and I wish you all well. Merry Christmas and a festival of light to you all. Thank you very much, Daniel. We'll just sit quietly and allow him to return.
You okay, Nick? Yes, we're good. We're good. Do you want to just sit quietly for a couple of minutes? Um, let me just get my glasses. Are you all right? Just um, explaining about the Melzer House. Oh, I will do. Yes. Um, as as uh, as many of you will know, each year when we do the uh, the Christmas tree seances, we bring toys into the seance room. They're touched by the spirit world. Um, they're they're given to children that Daniel and the rest of the uh, Austin Wish Circle in the spirit world bring forward. They're children that haven't experienced. Uh, a very pleasant time at Christmas while they were here on the earth plane, uh, but they get to unwrap the toys. The scientists in the spirit world take etheric copies of them so that they can take them with them. And um, afterwards, uh, we, take the, we take the toys and the donations uh, to Demelza House, which is uh, a children's hospice for terminally ill children. And I can tell you that your, that your kind generosity uh, for tonight's demonstration has raised well in excess of 750 pounds. Um, that in addition to all the toys that have been donated um, here and at other locations uh, will, will, will make a, a marvelous time for those, uh, for those children that may not be with us for too much longer. So I wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart uh, for all that you've done and for, and for making that possible and for everybody in the Austin Wish Circle. Do you have anything to add to that, Scott? Because I just yeah. have one thing to say. I think it's, um, it's very heartwarming to know that people are considering other people at this time. And I'd like to thank all of you uh, for taking the time to be with us this night and to understand that this is only a small part of the work that we do. And without people like you, people like me wouldn't be able to work in, in such a way. And I think that you guys are the evidence that spiritualism and mediumship is more alive today than it ever has been. That you have come on here and to investigate. But with the Melzer House, for it to be for a charity and for a cause, you are the embodiment of spirituality because you are giving to children that you may never meet in this world, but you may meet in the spirit world when you die, when they obviously pass. And um, so you're going to have an army of children waiting there uh, to say thank you. So on behalf of the Austin Wish Circle, I want to thank you for allowing me to work for you. And thank you for supporting such an awesome, awesome cause at this moment in time. So. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, Scott, for all your hard work this evening. It was a tremendous evening. And for the rest of you, I hope you've really enjoyed it. And if you'd like to join us again, we're doing it all again on the 11th uh, of February. Um, you go to the same place where you signed up for this and you can register for the, for the 11th of February date. And in addition to that, um, Scott and I have been working to open the Austin Wish Shop, uh, where we where we sell lots of um, aids for mediumship, for physical mediumship. And if you want to go along to that, it's austinwishshop.com. Um, you will find you may find some interesting things in there, and we're going to be adding to that as we go through the new year. So, thank you very much for joining us, and hopefully, we'll get to see you all again on the 11th of February. Thank you guys and, and thank you and happy Christmas and be safe this year and I hope you have a lovely, lovely new year and I hope to shake your hands or, or hug you in whatever place it may be. So all the best and thank you to Nick for giving up his evening to do this and um, you know, thank you for supporting Banyan and supporting this wonderful charity. My pleasure. Thank you. Merry thank Christmas. You, Merry Christmas. Thank you.